Hello my beautiful viewers on my channel James Higgins Open World. Well here we are, it's uh, episode 5 of James Higgins Mysterious World. Well, 5 more to go after this one. Uh, so we're halfway through. Anyway, let's get to it. Here we go. Uh, this is the, uh, here we go, story 1. The cabin in Peru. Peru's Mark Awaunsi Stone Forest has been reputed to be a doorway to another dimension for centuries. It's to be expected considering how many of the stone formations have eerie resemblances to human faces, religious symbols and more. It's also known for having travellers who journey there, never to be seen again. According to Dr. Ruel Sent Eno, one woman decided to brave the forest with friends despite being warned about strange disappearances in the area. She, she and her friends on the trip saw a strange cabin in the middle of the stone forest and could hear people having a party inside. They looked inside the cabin's windows and saw that they were dressed in 17th century clothing. Just one second. Entrance by the strange revelers. The woman had tried to enter the cabin. She was halfway in before her friends pulled her back out. Almost immediately she realised that she was paralysed on the side of her body uh, that had entered the strange cabin. Dr. Sen and Senantino diagnosed her with uh, hemp, whatever that is, uh, I'll spell it H-E-M-I-P-L-E-G-I-A uh, and suggested that her quick trip into another dimension may have uh, permanently altered her nervous system. Well, can you believe that? Unbelievable. Wow. There you go. Just one second. Right, here we go. It's the next story. Story two. Four girls took a wrong turn and found themselves driving in an entirely different unknown environment. Let's get to the story. The ladies had been driving on black asphalt in the desert, but after taking a wrong turn, they said they found themselves driving on white cement surrounded by a grain field and a lake. They spotted a building with a large uh, neon sign making up illegible random uh, squiggles. And as they pulled in for assistance, a large group of tall men poured out of the front door, seemingly shocked and upset, waving their arms at the girls. Then the girls realised these tall men didn't even appear to be human, so they freaked out and drove off. While the girls were driving away, they noticed four peculiar egg-shaped uh, automobiles mounted on a tricycle-style wheels were followed them. They sped ahead until the mysterious vehicles were out of sight, and when they uh, reached the canyon and drove all the way back through it, they'd uh, somehow returned to the desert they were originally in. Glad to be back, but unable to figure out the mysterious place they'd gone, or how they arrived there. Uh, bloody hell. Wow. Hey. Eh? Wow. Hey, just one second. Well, hello, here we are. Right, here's the next story uh, I'm going to tell you. Right, this story is uh, a friend of mine told me this uh, a long time ago. Uh, I haven't seen him in ages. He was telling me once, uh, I don't remember the story exactly, but it's near enough. Uh, he was telling me once that he was out in his car, it was him and his wife, uh, and he saw a UFO over the car, which was sort of shaped like that, you know, like that, like that, you know. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Like that. And the light there, 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 over his car. Now what that was, I d uh, what that could have been, I don't know. It may have been a, a military aircraft, could have even been the Aurora. You Google that. The Aurora is allegedly a, a plane which can get anywhere in the world in three hours. Uh, that the military is supposed to have got in Area 51. So it might have been that. You know, you just don't know, do you? But, uh, yeah, he told me that a long time ago. Uh, right, here's another little story. Just one second. I'm going to tell you now as well. Here we go. A church building pig in Winnick. Winwick. Winwick. All right, so just one second. Here we go. The spirit of a handy pig allegedly haunts a church at Winwick, Warrington. 
He's told that the foundations of Winwick uh, Church were once set in another location, but uh, a squealing pig was unhappy with the decision. Apparently, it moved the work, which had been completed so far in one night, to, to the spot where St. Oswald had fallen. A carving of the pig can be found in the church's wall. Wow! Wow! A ghost pig! Bloody hell, eh? How about that, Paul? Huh? Hey, whoa! A ghost pig! <laughs> Ooh, who knows? One second. Right, here's another strange story. Lioness in Upton. Right, one second. Reports of a lioness haunting Upton in Chester were reported on October 23rd, 1976. It's believed the lioness was spotted roaming in the area. However, when police turned up to search the area, there was nothing to be found. Is it possible that this was a curious cat from Chester Zoo who was, uh, who was able to make her way back home? We'll let you decide. Well, whoa, hey, there you go. Here we go, Is the next story. Vanishing Hitchhiker in Y Bunbury. Y Bunbury. Right, one second. An apparition of a hitchhiker at Y Bunbury was the source of unease for one motorist in 1996. It's reported that on October 20th that year, a driver picked up a male hitchhiker on the A51. The man was wearing old-style motorbike leathers. The kind, uh, the kind stranger noticed just a short while into the journey, the driver realised that the hitchhiker had disappeared completely, although the seatbelt remained in place and the door was locked. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Ooh, hey! Just one second. Right, here we go. Let's get to it. Here's another, here's another story. Last sight of the of a departed friend. Here we go then, right? This letter from Margaret J. Gladstone of Wiltshire was published on September 24th, 1948. Margaret was prompted to write by some recent letters which had appeared in the magazine in previous weeks. The ghost letters which you have been published in uh, are very interesting to me and I venture to add one of my own. Returning to my flat in Westminster one afternoon, I saw two friends coming towards me on the other side of the street. I had no time to stop and hoped they would not notice me. I crossed the street behind them and hurried home. As at breakfast time, a friend rang to tell me that I, that the man had seen the man I had seen the day before had died in the night. I was amazed and described how I had seen him and his wife apparently in perfect health. My friend exclaimed that this was impossible as he had been ill for some days. The widow I mentioned is still alive. <coughs> wow! Wow! Right, here's another one. The Disappearing Woman. Mad Smith's letter which published on September 3rd, 1948 tells a story which took place in Devon. Here we go. Harold Penrose's Somerset Ghosts, August 6th, were significantly accountable for, but my own experience in Taunton is less easily disposed of. This occurred more than 10 years ago, but it's still vivid in my mind. One afternoon, my attention was, ar was arrested by a woman moving through the throng on whose face was a most dreadful expression of distress. So appalling was her grief, with great tears rolling down her cheeks, that I had an unquenchable impulse to follow her. I could not see her again. I looked all about, followed, followed in the way she was going, trying to see again my vague impression of black clinging garments, a tall figure, grey, disordered hair, and that face, trouble. She was nowhere. One second. <clears throat> I turned to my companion, who were amazed at my outburst. They had seen nothing, but at the time we were passing the bloody, bloody assizes. Ooh, one second, one second. Wow! Check that one out. One second. <clears throat> right, here's another one, The Lost Village. 
This wartime letter from a reader identified themselves as OATS, Surrey, was published on February 1942. In Scotland uh, last year, while walking through an ancient forest with my husband, we took a shortcut through the wild glen and intended to walk down the bank of the Fillon to uh, Crean Larrick. He came to an open space flat and treeless and full of sun haze. As we entered, my husband remarked, I don't like this place, it's too old and dead. I was about to reply that I felt it only peaceful, but I suddenly had a sensation of depression almost amounting to hopelessness. What I saw was more a feeling as if all about me was snow under a laden sky, and behind me there were people and their eyes were without hope. My husband s saw that I was oddly frightened, and so we left for Cryan Larrick. We told them at the hotel that we'd felt spooky at one place in the forest. The late Mr. Alistair Stewart said, oh yes, that would be where a whole village was lost in the snow and they all starved to death. One second. We are both Celtic, but neither of us in the least psychic. One thing I do know is that even if I were chased by Hitler and his grizzly gang, I would not enter that forest again. Wow! Wow! Anyway, there you go. That is, uh, that is episode five, done and dusted. Uh, anyway, if you want to uh, send me your paranormal stories in, please do. Uh, the, the email is formchester69 at hotmail.com. And it's in the beginning and at the end. It's formchester69 at hotmail.com. Anyway, thank you very much for watching James Higgins, Mysterious World, Episode 5. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And a big shout out to uh, Nick the Egg, Ben Mundy, Paul, CB United States and everyone else. So thank you for watching James Higgins, Mysterious World, Episode 5. Thank you very much. <laughs>